Well, Governor Ron DeSantis was here in downtown Fort Myers today touting the resiliency of Southwest Florida since Hurricane Ian. But one thing he didn't talk about was rising home insurance and people getting canceled. He didn't talk about it, that is, until I brought it up. Dave. Governor, uh, just a two prong question. As you know, tens of thousands of people have either been canceled, they're losing their home insurance, they can't find insurance. Some have f said that the state needs to do more. So the reports of people getting shortchanged or getting uh, unlawfully dropped because someone was looking to make more money, the uh, insurance regulation uh, office is investigating that. But but yes, they should. They need to be held accountable. Can you tell us what's being done this session? What you hope to accomplish to help people? In terms of this upcoming legislative session, uh, I, I'm open to do whatever we need to do uh, to continue to work on the problem. The problem? Many folks are seeing their home insurance rates triple. The effect after Ian was very drastic and increased them dramatically. Thousands of people are seeing their policies canceled and others like Sanibel Mayor Holly Smith can't get what they're owed. We are all stuck it seems like and these people that have lost everything are depending on these dollars to move forward. NBC2's Dave Elias is on Sanibel Island tonight showing us the progress that's been made and all of the work that is yet to come. Dave. A lot of progress, Peter, but you know, if you're like me and this is your first time here, Sanibel is still unrecognizable. And we would just give you an idea. This is the outside of Bailey's General Store. And this is the inside of the store. Just trash piled high here in their parking lot. Bailey's General Store, one of hundreds of businesses here, destroyed. It won't be built back the same. It'll be different. So it's a whole era gone. Karen Murray has vacationed here for years, and she says Sanibel was unrecognizable when she returned today. It's shocking when you first see it. Beachside condos among the thousands of homes still uninhabitable. We want people to understand what they are looking at is not what they used to see. Now shards of glass and other debris are still littered throughout the sand here on Sanibel Island. In fact, it has forced the city to keep its beaches closed. A company that tracks data claims to have uncovered a plan to attack insurance companies. No longer are law firms using billboards and TV ads to go after insurance companies. Instead, they're taking this path using your computer and your phone to attract you to their sites. An army of machines conducting an assault against the insurance industry. Well, if the federal government would default on its loans, it could have a devastating impact on the more than half a million senior citizens who live here in Southwest Florida and rely on Social Security. And the VA Health Clinic in Cape Coral warns that it could have a serious impact on the tens of thousands who use this clinic each year. You can go to the VA clinic any day and that place is packed. The Cape Coral VA sees 33,000 veteran patients like Kevin Boyd each year. I myself use the VA. They need that assistance. Some of these veterans are sleeping in the street. Well, volunteers inside Lee County Schools are starting to step forward to get training to carry guns inside of schools. And tonight we are giving you an exclusive first-hand look of that training that's going on. About 200 Lee County school employees are ready to suit up and take aim at getting trained. That's your site alignment. To carry a gun in school. Threat identification, I mean, there's a whole, a book of things that would go into responding to an active shooter. Lee County Sheriff Carmine Marcino's office. It's a big job. Responsible for the training. Training on de-escalation, training on how to deal with someone that has mental illness, critical incident training, the full gamut. And despite that, more guns in schools make some parents more nervous. Can you assure people as sheriff there's nothing to worry about? I completely understand why someone might be nervous or, or not know if they're for it or against it. But as the sheriff, I can tell you with absolute confidence, my name owns the guardian in the schools. I'm not signing off on anything that's not safe, secure, and that we don't go above and beyond. Do you think that the Guardian program can prevent school shootings? 
we all know bad people will have guns. Bad people find guns. And I can tell you with the Guardian program, as an additional set of eyes and ears, another person on our team, I'm certain we're doing everything we can at the highest level to protect our children, our school systems. But still, that anxiety is still sitting there with these kids. So we have to make sure that they feel safe. Lee Kelly scoreboard member Debbie Jordan has always expressed concern with employees carrying guns, but realizes the Guardian program was inevitable. The times are, have changed, and I know that we have had more swatting incidents. So what does a 40% increase mean for you cost-wise? Well, it's expected to bring the average premium in Florida to about $6,000 a year. Now, that is four times the national average of about $1,700. And many people tell me they just don't know where they're going to get the extra money. They're going insane. They went up, I believe, 42% in our community, and they're expected to go up. You do mention maybe another 40%. I don't see anybody's pay going up 40%. That's my concern. Many homeowners getting their renewals are already seeing that rate hike of more than 40%. Last year, it was about $1,300. This year, it's over $3,000. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to see sticker shock with so many Florida families this year. Insurance experts blame hundreds of thousands of lawsuits that are plaguing the industry, billions of dollars in statewide storm damage last year, and rising reinsurance rates. So right now, Florida is clearly the largest average premium in the country. There's nobody higher than Florida's average. Mark Friedlander with the Insurance Information Institute says that even more scary is that half of the state's insurance companies are on shaky ground. Half of Florida's residential insurers are on a watch list from the insurance regulator because of their financial health. That's what's so concerning to us. Seven insurance companies have gone under in the last year, and there is fear that even more could go belly up, leaving many people with no option but to go into the state-run citizens' property insurance. And when you see citizens growing so rapidly, more than 30,000 new policies a month, that shows us how unstable the Florida insurance market remains. As costs rise, leaving homeowners with few options. It will be hard, but I can't see moving or leaving. You have to have insurance, so I think most people are just going to have to pay it. Unfortunately, industry experts say they see no light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to rates dropping. Dave Elias, NBC2.